So I think this was really great. I'm, I'm not sure if everybody else is in the same background, but I was, I was a part of the privileged generation too. Um, and and uh, I, I can really account for like some of the bad energy that was a part of sort of like the valley in the Silicon Valley in the late 90s was this really special place where it, there was just this constant whisper of why don't we start up that was you know in the background of every conversation you had. Um, at the time I was working for Sun Microsystems in sort of the mid 90s when, when Java first came out. Um, the dot, and, yeah exactly, the dot and dot com. Um, and, and it was just prevalent, like we, we all had friends who had started up and made a lot of money and, and we were all just watching the market boom. It, it, it was just incredibly just right there that if we, you know, that, that this opportunity was available to us, that we knew people who had been successful. We, so the, the whole ecosystem was, was there. I'm, it's actually why I'm in India a little bit is because I feel some of that here. It's not quite as dense as it was in Silicon Valley in the late 90s, but there's starting to be more like startup energy in India right now where, I mean, it must be why you're here to some degree. It's, it's like there's starting to be some feel and general perception, I'll say around the world, that it's possible that like the next Google comes from India. You know, that, that you know, of, of the opportunities coming, like India is now like at the front, at the front of the pack, like, and, and while it's not as concentrated as the Silicon Valley was, like, there's, there's still a big, a, a big push, a lot of entrepreneurial spirit, um, and starting to be money. The, another aspect of the Valley in the 90s that's interesting to talk about is, it was the first time I think in history where, where large institutional money really took a bet on youth. Um, there was, you know, like I got, I did a startup, I got funded, I was like 24, 25. Um, a lot of, you know, the, the other people from the Java group who started Marimba, you know, they were all like billionaires by this time and they were all in their late 20s. We actually had, I had some friends who went to get funding and they wore suits and they felt like they didn't get funded because the VCs all thought that they were like accounting reps, you know, and, and they all just had this perception that like, that this revolution, the internet revolution that was changing everything, that only the young understood it. Like, and, and they were willing to bet significant amounts of money on on you know very inexperienced um, people, and and they just and they appreciated the culture that came with with youth, and and sort of like you were saying too of like there was both it was a very healthy relationship, and that there was both an appreciation for some of the comic aspects of having very young teams where we all slept at work, we played ping pong, our VCs gave us a ping pong table, um, but at the same time they also. Um, they also treated like us like intelligent adults and in that we had board meetings where we were expected to to make firm commitments on what we were going to be able to deliver and and to follow up and so so that part of things was was really neat um, so I did one startup uh, it was successful and then since then I've been a part of like a number of other startups both in in Silicon Valley and in India and now I'm sort of looking at starting an incubator as my next startup. So, um, so my, my vision on an incubator, I've been you know, thinking about this a lot. It's a little bit different than a lot of what you've been hearing, um, but it's, it's, it's worth talking through. Again, my, my background is all with technology, so, so that sort of um, tempers some of it. Some thoughts. Um, think about think about an incubator as, as a business and in, in the, you know, you have, you have your, your raw materials, you have the, the teams, the people that, that come into your system that you decide to work with. You have your, you know, sort of like your plant, which is like working on taking these raw materials and refining them into like um, products. Your product are the companies that, that are coming out. Like, and and be clear about this from a, a couple of perspectives. One is this notion that, um, that, 
that you're trying to help make these teams as, as pretty and marketable as possible. And that means filling out the team, it, it means um, refining the ideas, you know, a number of things. But even more importantly, it means you have to be clear about who you're selling them to. Like the, you know, it's, it's very difficult to have a market where you're just creating product and you're not clear about, about what the exit is, how you're, how you're offloading your, your goods. In, um, in the venture capital world, this is, this is either exits or IPOs. Like, you know, if all you're doing is equity, like if, because, you know, these people aren't giving you cash. So, so you're getting equity in exchange for, you know, putting in a bunch of time and resources. You need to be clear that there's a path, that you have a path to where, where you're going to sell this thing. Um, you know, and, and it doesn't necessarily have to be an acquisition, though, you know, it's either an acquisition or that you have a path to investors who are large enough to be able to take the company to the, to the IPO stage. Like, going, you know, going the, the big win route is going to take a lot of help. So, you know, as an incubator, your customer will be the VCs whose business is to take it the, the rest of the way. So, you know, as an incubator, the, the term I hear a lot here is, is this pre-incubation, and that's what I, at least it's the area that I'm interested in. It's most, most VCs in India aren't interested in, um, aren't interested in first-time entrepreneurs. They, um, it's, it's just sort of the way it's netted out is that the, there's a lot of like raw young talent that's like interested and the VCs are skeptical on working with them. And so there's a lot of, I think that there's a big opportunity to work with young people and then give them this like initial, it's called sort of seed funding um, to get them to the point where they're credible, they have prototypes, they have some traction so that they can talk to VCs. Um, so going through, so there's these three parts to, to the, the system. You, you have to be good at recruiting. Like it's, it's kind of your, your bread and butter. If you don't have good, good ingredients, good materials, good um, people, your, your output's not going to be great. The things to look for, I think, are, are number one is commitment. Like, like um, the, everybody has said, you know, your, the ideas are going to change substantially over time. You know, like if, it's something that my friends used to always say, just look for a, a light behind the eyes. Like you, you need to be really clear that like they're, they're going to do it. Like they're, they're going, there's going to be all kinds of heartache. Like they need to like be committed enough to, to go through it. Um, they need to be bright. Um, and then the other thing that, I think is important is, is sort of this, is to pick a space. Like, like in, in your case, it's like, I don't even totally understand all of the details of like, you know, MPLS, but like, you, you know, you're a professor of electrical engineering at IIT Bombay and you're in core network services. It's like, I don't know what you're doing, but if you're doing anything interesting in an area that's totally fundamental to like, you know, how like networks operate, then like, okay, we'll figure out what the idea is, you know, exactly. I at least appreciate that, that you're smart and that we're in an interesting space. And that like, there's going to be interesting ideas here. And so, so, so we can take the time to like, let those things fall out. And I think that that's some of what you get from the incubator. Um, the mentorship um, section, I think it is really, um, is really important. It's, it, that's really, I think, like what, what you do, like what your actions are. Um, some things that, that I've seen in, in some incubators, uh, register the companies, yeah? Like, you know, if, if, people, are, if people are committed, then, then like take the effort to actually get them set up. Until, until companies actually exist, like they can't, they can't have agreements with anybody. And so, and so just legally, you're just in this kind of like limbo unless you actually help them get set up. Um, there's also giving them help with a, a accounting. Like the, the thing you want to focus on is like your, your entrepreneurs, they're like a bunch of young guys. They're, 
they have an idea, they want to work on it. Like you as, as an incubator, what you're really providing is sort of like the adult supervision and kind of trying to take care of all of the administrative and like miscellaneous crap that, that gets in people's way as they're trying to work on their business. And so, so that's, that's, that's a large part of your role. Um, there's another thing that, that comes in handy is um, one problem that young entrepreneurs face sometimes when they start up is that they just go, they suddenly go from this environment where, where they've been working in a, in a company where, you know, people have been expecting things from them regularly or they've been in school where they have assignments and then all of a sudden they're on their own and there's nobody really looking over their shoulder to see whether or not they do anything. You know, and, you know, yeah, they should be working, but we should all be working. Um, it's really useful to have like weekly meetings where people have to present what they've done over the last week and they have to talk about what they're gonna do the next week. You know, even if you don't understand a word they say, the fact that, the fact that they have to make this meeting, the, that they have to sort of go and, and do it, it, it's going to orient them around like, you know, making sure that they do something. They, there's some accountability. Like even if you don't understand the details, like, Part of, part of your role in an incubator, I think, is providing some of this accountability that would typically come from senior management or your management. Like, now you're doing a startup, you don't have management. Your, your investors become your, your managers. Um, and then a large part, I think, is, is this, this networking. It, and I, I, I almost caution people to to really introspect and think about like how good your network is like because you need you know a lot of the teams coming to you are going to be incomplete which means that you know it'll be a couple of geeky guys and you know they need they need someone who can take care of business or marketing or you know there'll be some some missing parts of it and part of what should happen is that you should be able to connect with those people and help to form complete teams. And then you, you know, like I was saying before, you need to be able to connect these people with the investors or the, um, or the companies, the partners, the clients who can take them to the next level. Like in, at least with the, the kind of incubator I'm interested in, like um, the, I'm not interested in, in trying to hold somebody's hand for years and years and years while they establish the business. Like, I want to work with people up to the point where they can demonstrate, where they can demonstrate the idea, demonstrate that, you know, that they are capable of doing something interesting and present this to people whose job it is to take them to the next level or to work with these people in some sort of professional way. Um, but that all comes down to like whether or not you can actually orchestrate these connections. The, the other disadvantage of, of working with first-time entrepreneurs is that, that almost by definition their networks are weak. Like, you know, they, they're either just out of college or they have a couple of years, but, but they, they don't yet have the experience to be able to have the conversations that they need in order to close deals. And so, and so it's, it's one of the places where, I mean, it's why real VCs fund like experienced entrepreneurs. It's largely for the network. If you have this network, if you can take advantage of this network, whether it's your alumni or you know, your personal friends or something, then that, that'll help a lot with you know, being, provide the, being able to provide this critical element that's necessary for starting up. But, but it's like, for a startup, you don't necessarily need to have that guy on full time if you can get it from your investors, if you can get it from an incubator. The, um, maybe my, my last point here, so, so that's on the, the cell. Like, you need to be able to exit these things. Like, in my opinion, you shouldn't, you shouldn't hold on indefinitely. Um, so three quick things. For, for me, success is either an IPO, which means that 
you know, at the incubation level that we were able to get investors. It's an acquisition. Um, a lot of times now people are doing these early stage acquisitions. And so if you can sell a company to somebody else, they get, you know, a team of proven engineers who, you know, can demonstrate that they've been working on some interesting technology. Um, at a low cost, you know, it's like everybody, everybody wins. Um, and then the third thing, which I respect, though it's not, it's not at all respected in the Valley, is um, just being profitable. Um, if, like, in my opinion, it's a valid business model to get into service. Um, but it's important to know, it's important to know whether service is an outcome, like it being an ongoing service type business is a potential outcome. If, if what you're doing is taking equity as compensation, then getting, then you're never going to get your money back. And the fact that you created a business is not going to help you at all. And so, and so be careful in how you structure your deals with your companies um, using some combination of equity and debt to, that properly reflects the type of business that everybody thinks is being created. If people are creating a service business that's just going to be generating income but isn't going to really have a significant amount of like um, equity value, then, then structure, structure things as some sort of loan that needs to get paid back. If it's a shoot for the moon IPO type thing, then equity is a good idea. Or you can mix these things. Um, one other thing I'd like to just point to quickly is there's another kind of incubator in the US that I think is really, really interesting and it's what I'm interested in. It's called the Y Combinator. Um, so it's worth, it's worth looking at, <clears throat> you know, even if you don't, even if you don't do that model exactly, it, um, it addresses some of the, the issues I see with a lot of business incubators um, of like, you know, they really focus on just getting a flow of companies through and, and moving quickly. That's it. Thanks. <laughs>